what up guys welcome to the just pearly things youtube channel and welcome to the sit down where i have on guests from all different walks of life to you know speak about women's discrimination and just how horrible life is as a woman that's like really what we focus on here so today i have <clears throat> one of i have the founder of one of the largest and most in influential men's rights websites called a voice for men you're based in houston texas you worked for 30 years for in the chemical dependency treatment field see i don't even know what that means i don't even know what that means that's how crazy this is and um where you observed a great deal of discrimination against men and boys and it was that experience that that inspired you to pursue men's rights issues uh welcome to the show paul Thank you for having me. Thanks for Glad coming. Being here. By the way, you've got an old bio. I left Houston six years ago. I live in Roanoke now in Virginia. Yeah, you know, we're on a budget here. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a like it's like I'm a woman. What do you think I'd get? Send me your donate button. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I found you because I thought you were just hilarious. Someone sent me your videos like with dating advice for men. And I just thought it was so funny. So what what got you started making YouTube videos? Well, I mean, there was a dialogue about men and women in this society that needed to happen and still needs to happen <laughs> on a much larger scale. And um, I just sort of took my observations about men and women life, uh, discrimination on either, either or both. And rethought things and started putting it down to words and doing videos and writing articles um and so what what did you find did you think that women were just the most reasonable oh of course absolutely yeah yeah that's really what i found. discriminated against yes but exactly no what i found i mean the the area of discrimination that's interesting i don't think there is that much of it at least not against women and so what I focus myself is on relationships, dating life, marriage life, long-term relationships, that sort of thing, and encouraging men to find their values as well as their balls and to conduct themselves accordingly in relationships. Uh, because right now we've got a, a society full of men who can't even speak up about what's on their mind or who won't out of fear. And why do you think men won't? It's like weird. Once you start to see it, it's like you can't unsee it. And you just realize like that men are just pandering to us like all the time. Like it's so crazy. Like I started to almost get mad. I was like, why are they lying? Like they're lying to us. And I was like, why like why do you think that is? Do you think it's the the system that's against them? Do you think it's the media? Like, what do you think is the main problem? Well, I think the reason most men are lying is because women want them to, because they <laughs> actually insist on it. Dang it. I mean, it starts with, do I look fat in that dress and goes all the way to the wage gap and other problems that men won't talk about. But I think there's two fundamental reasons that they won't speak their mind with women. One, they're afraid of not getting laid. Um, be real honest about that. It interferes with the pursuit of sex, to be honest with women and direct with them, and so men avoid it. Uh, the other component of that is a more emotional one where men are terrified of women's rejection and disapproval. And so even in social settings where there's no sexual connotation to anything, men still practice this sappy public fawning over women uh, that makes them look like simps. Why do you think that is? Do you think it starts like at home because so many people are in single mother homes? Um, or female single -led mother homes, homes with mothers, <laughs> uh, <laughs> period. I mean, it's easy to, and, and absolutely right to point at the problem of single mothers and the lack of masculine influence in the lives of men. Uh, but there's a million households out there where the woman rules the roost and it might as well be not a father in the house. That's part of this problem of not being direct, not being honest, not treating women as equals intellectually, emotionally, other in other ways, because women reject men who treat them as equals. 
so there's this undertone to everything all the time that if men are truthful and honest and direct with women, they don't want any part of it. So what do you mean when you say there's a bunch of like women that rule the roost? So well, and the, like the, the father's not there. Well, I'm talking about henpecked men. I'm talking about uh, households where the woman is the law, or where she sort of walks her man like a dog. And there's a lot of men that, look, we got to be honest. We got to have an honest conversation. There's a lot of men that live their lives in subservience to women. And of course, when they start living in subserv subservience to women, women don't respect them. And so the relationship becomes one of control and disrespect and abusiveness that may end up going both ways. But the fundamental problem is that you have men who can't assert their, their leadership and masculinity in the home. It's a rather unpopular thing to do with a lot of women. Well, and it doesn't help that all the feminists like make up these words that don't mean anything to like, like, co that's what I was, that's what I realized. I'm like the feminists, like, thing that they do is they bring in these like big words to confuse you and change definitions so that's what i noticed on the show i'm like why does every bitch date a narcissist like how many narcissists <laughs> are there isn't this millions like, upon millions they're endless isn't this one percent of the population like how does every chick and then i realized it's on the right too like it's not like men's issues are sort of like not championed by the right or the left. Cause I, I was more of like a trap. I, I would say my belief set before getting into like men's stuff was more traditional conservative. Um, and what I realized is even on the right, they still, it's like always about what the women wants, like on both political parties. The left kills you with feminism, kills men with feminism and yeah. the right kills men with chivalry, uh, which is another, I mean, uh, one of the things I would hope part of our discussion will go to today is that we need a new and different and better social contract with women. Uh, this is not 1600 anymore. Uh, women work, have jobs. Uh, we just haven't managed to develop a society where a working woman shows up with her purse at a date. Most women still <laughs> insist yeah. that they're wined and dined and I think the last study I read about this said that 44% of women would be offended if they were expected to carry any financial weight in a dating relationship. Wow. Uh, that is just, I mean, that's entitlement that, that needs to end. Yeah, that's what I didn't realize. That was, that's like part of the red pill in a way, because you realize like, men get such a bad deal today historic like from a historical point of view like I, when i found out a hundred years ago 95 percent of women were virgins or not sorry 85 percent, 85 percent. now today 95 percent aren't so it's like right. half of the marriage contract you're supposed to bring purity and then we say give me a traditional outcome and it's offensive if you don't pay but isn't it offensive if you come in like not avert, I know it's like really normal now, so no one thinks about this. But like, it, like it used to be offensive if you came in not a virgin for your husband. Uh, absolutely, and and that's changed. And unfortunately, you know, this is a part of what we called women's sexual liberation. Yeah. But the net result is is that women are twice as miserable as they've ever been. Um, they're not happy. Any t you do any kind of Google search or research on women's relative happiness or their happiness relative to men, and they come up a fail every time. And it's gotten worse uh, over the years. The more so liberated women have become, the less happy they are. Yeah, well, and then I started looking into the stats, like, because I was like, why are the guys complaining so much about us? And I'm like, one out of three of us has had an abortion. One out of three of us has an STD. 90% of us have been on birth. Like, when I started looking at the numbers, I'm like, I, I kind of get it. <laughs> well, and not only that, that's just the stuff that shows up on entry. Uh, on the other side of that coin, the men who engage these women in relationships down the road, find that they have more than a 50% chance that the woman will file for divorce or 80% of divorces are filed by women, over half of mar marriages end in divorce. And then comes the financial and often reputational ruin that happens to men during divorce. It's uh, 
there's, you know, what's the return on investment for men right now in women? And it's shit. What, what is, um, so what contract do you think it should be for the new? Well, it, it's going to have to be negotiated. Okay. Um, I set a limit. Uh, I'm 21 years in a relationship right now. And, and, but back then I, I set a standard that if a woman couldn't show up with her purse and contribute financially, I wouldn't be interested. And lo and behold, when I drew that line in the sand, I met somebody who felt the same way. Uh, I think that's what men need to do is they need to figure out what they want, what they want a woman to show up with in a relationship. You know, if, if all she has is a, you know, a, a wish list from Tiffany's and an occasional blow job, that's not showing up with much. Um, <laughs> And men need to start asking themselves, what do I want from women? Uh, do I want a woman with a body count of 40 uh, when I meet her? Do I want a woman who ran off two fathers or both of her baby daddies? Um, is this the kind of relationship that I want? Uh, yeah, head to the topless bar and, and pick out a girl. Uh, <laughs> but the problem here is men's standards. They're they literally have very few other than will she accept me and have sex with me. What do you, what do you say to men that want more of a traditional relationship? Do you think that's possible in 2023? I, I think it's foolish <laughs> in, in 2023. Uh, by traditional, you're saying uh, a woman, you get married legally and, and the woman stays at home and, and raises yeah. kids and takes care of a home. If you can be the one in a hundred guy or one in a thousand guy, whatever it is that actually can make that happen and don't, doesn't end up cleaned out uh, seven, eight, nine years down the road uh, for your efforts, then fine. But marriage is no longer a, a, a safe institution for men to inhabit. It just isn't. Legal marriage is a contract with the state. And the contract says that she is temporary. Eventually she will leave. But the state will remain and embedded in your behind for quite some time after the marriage is over. Yeah, you can you can try it. Uh, but I challenge people to tell me, is it is it a good investment? With today's women, you consider the, the pool of women, you consider the attitudes about marriage, you consider the corruption of family courts and the devastating consequences of things like parental alienation. Is it worth the risk? I'd argue it's like going into a casino with your paycheck and hitting the slot machines. You <laughs> might get lucky. Mm -hmm. Chances are you're going to leave broke. And so for men who want to pursue traditional relationships, I just say do the math. So what about, can you do it without the state? Because there's just a big like um, debate right now going on between more of like the red pillars and the traditional conservatives. And I guess they argue their argument is you're by walking away from marriage or like complaining about women. It's like you're just part of the problem where like they're like, oh, why aren't you giving us solution? You know what I mean? You, I don't know. You, I'm sure you've heard that rhetoric before. Yes, I get it. Identifying the problem is part of the problem. Um, yeah, that's what I said. That, that's, a, that's what it sounds like. Um, I don't really have much to, to say to those guys, I mean, people have been telling men to shut up about their problems for a millennia. The moment a man opens his mouth and says, I'm hurting, uh, I've been screwed over, whatever, the world generally turns on him, or at the very least uh, rejects his pleas for assistance. I get my email box filled all the time with desperate guys who are looking for help. The, the same guys that when you talked about pursuing a traditional relationship, a lot of those guys end up in my email box saying they're taking everything I own. I'm sleeping in my car. What do I do? And there's nothing to tell them. Yeah, no, that was what I realized too. When I, I started working on a divorce documentary and I started realizing that um, a lot of these guys picked women with no red flags, I would say on paper. I mean, some did, some picked very red flagged women, but some like it was like no kids. She wasn't, she was still in her twenties. She was from a more like Eastern European background and yet she still left, took his shit, took the kids. 
and I'm like, and I'll, I'll interview these guys. And I'm just thinking if I was in their shoes, I, I would walk away to like, I understand why guys don't want to get married today. Yep. And, and the thing is, you know, I, I take exception to the idea that men somehow end up in a minefield getting blown up by a mine when they had no way of knowing where they were walking. Um, crazy doesn't hide to anybody looking for it. Men's problem fundamentally with women is that they reject the red flags. They're there. Those guys had reason to believe that that was going to go south and rejected it. I don't, I just, I just don't think that uh, dis deceptive and crazy hides from anybody who's looking for it. So I'm, I, I hate to say it, I don't have a lot of sympathy for that story for those guys. It's like they have to own their lives and keep their eyes open about who they're with, judging her behavior, testing her, evaluating how she handles the word no, and a lot of other things in a relationship. Um, just because she's not a single mother and doesn't have tattoos doesn't mean she's not going to divorce rape you. Uh, men need to be conscious fully and investigate who they're with yeah so i guess i would hear from a lot of guys like the women would switch completely after they got married do you think that's not true i think that yes the 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 more real aspects of their personality do come out after marriage and there's even a school of thought in psychology about the familial that that once you're married your family of origin issues service and things change there but fundamentally, can a person handle frustration or a no in a relationship or a guy not doing like you want them to do? Um, that stuff is is present and observable at all points. Uh, it, yes, people change somewhat after they get married. But if you are so blind to who a person is that you're just waylaid the, uh, uh, about their irrational behavior you haven't tested them and i suggest to men all the time that they throw no's at women in their lives early on and to watch very carefully how they react if they become any hint of vindictiveness but of course you won't see vindictiveness during the honeymoon period of a relationship unless you go looking for it what how would a guy test a girl for vindictiveness telling her no Oh, and just seeing how she responds. Yes, and I'm I'm not suggesting that you know if her dog dies, you're <laughs> you're 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 not going to say no to giving her support at that time. Yeah. But something as innocuous as you know where you're going to eat or what movie you're going to see or where you're going to go and do something, telling her no and then watching very carefully for any of this, you know, fine, sort of like there's going to be retribution uh, for me getting this no. That is to me is an 86 moment for any woman, any hint of vindictiveness. Do you know what I realized when girls on the show would say, I did everything for him, I did so much for him, it actually says more about the girl because she's keeping score. And usually, like, we're so self centered that we don't notice all the things guys do for us. And so if she's keeping score of everything she's done, like he probably did so much for her too. He just didn't keep score. Right. Or what he did wasn't even noticed by her, which is uh -huh. also part of the equation. But, you know, every time I've heard somebody say, I did everything for him, mm -hmm. I immediately, that's a red flag for me, not just because they're keeping score, but because I don't believe that she did everything for him. I think she did some things that you're maybe supposed to do in a relationship. And now she wants, you know, an Oscar uh, or a Nobel prize or, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not buying it. I did everything for him. No, you didn't. <laughs> That's why you're trashing him right now. <laughs> um what are what are some other red flags so you said frustration telling her no keeping greed. Scores, but greed okay greed materialism okay shallowness shallowness 
And how can a guy test? I mean, I guess shallowness and materialism, you can kind of see it's like fake. It, it'll it's present like itself. Yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll present itself. And here's the problem, though. I'm talking about things that are red flags in women. These are actually red flags in men. Yeah. Uh, the fact of the matter is, for every gold digger out there, there's some guy in a jewelry store buying her a tennis bracelet. Men reward women for that shallow materialism. Uh, that's how they bring them in. And of course that creates more shallow women. So it's a vicious cycle. Um, but that's one of the things I suggest men look for. Because if you think that she has an, an attitude of entitlement about your money when you meet her, just imagine what her attitude about your money is going to be during a divorce. Right. Right. That's so true. So what motivated you to become an advocate for men's rights and create a voice for men? I'm a guy that likes the underdog. And I went most of my life not even knowing that men were underdogs. As a matter of fact, I would... Uh, I don't recall ever actually saying it, but I would have considered myself a feminist at one point when I was naive enough to think that women were the underdogs. Um, once I woke up to that, it just became a different underdog that I was pushing for. What do you think are the most pressing issues that men face today? Suicide is nearly at the at the top of the list. You know, the suicide rate for men is four times what it is for women. Uh, right under that and connected to that is the egregious rollback of civil rights that men experience in family courts. Um, their civil rights are just squashed and stepped on in star chamber-like activity. And that's a huge problem, which makes marriage a problem. Um, other than that, men's those things are stacked against men. All the rest of it, I put on men. Their poor choices is their biggest challenge. They, they choose terrible women to bond with. They make terrible financial decisions around women. They literally send their, their ships against the rocks. Um, and it's very, very hard to get them to stop. <laughs> why why do you think like family court is so bad like I, it, it baffled like the more i've done the document i really didn't understand why men wanted to get like didn't want to get married until i started doing this stuff but it, it's so crazy to me when i hear their stories like one guy had a woman plotting to like get him to hit her or get her to hit him and he shows me the text. So like people think I make this up and I'm like, no, I, I saw the case files. Like I looked at them and literally she still got custody. Like a woman that was plotting against her, her husband trying to get him to abuse her and lied about it in court said that he raped her. And then also they proved that she was lying. They still gave her custody. It's like, why is it so lopsided? I'll give you another example of this, and then I'll get back around to answering the question as best I can. I worked with a lieutenant colonel, Air Force lieutenant colonel out of West Virginia, who was married to a borderline personality female, very crazy. At one point, he was trying to leave the home with his daughter, and he was in an SUV with her, and the wife jumps up on the hood of the car and starts smashing the windshield in with a Coke bottle, he captured it on video to, to show the court what kind of behavior he was dealing with. And the judge admonished him for violating her privacy and threw the video out uh, of evidence. Um, there's two reasons for this. One is just the natural social bias that we have toward women, rescuing women. Uh, uh, Family courts are a, a, a factory for damsels in distress, and they play on our gynocentrism of the times, and women get preferential treatment. The other thing is that it's money. Uh, the courts tend to go after, we find that even female celebrities now that have a lot of money, they're getting screwed over in family courts uh, out of tons of cash. It's about the money. 
The courts go after whoever has the most income. That's what they want. And that's where their bread and butter is. Well, it's funny because they almost punish the men for doing the traditional thing, which is to work. <laughs> it's well, like we want, we want the men that work and provide. But if they work and provide, then they'll say, oh, you weren't with the kids enough. It's like. Well, what? not only that, you you work and provide. Not only were you not with the kids enough, but you set up a lifestyle. Your work and provision becomes the excuse for her to take it during the divorce. I'm dependent on him. I didn't have a career. I stayed at home. And so I've become accustomed to this life. And that becomes a rationale. It's why it's one of the things I bring up when men talk about starting traditional relationships and getting married. I want them to understand that when you arrive in family court, your work to take care of your family is the very thing they're going to use to take it from you after the marriage is over. Wow. So how would you, is there, is the legal system fixable? Like, are there any laws that could be passed that would fix this? <laughs> I, no, I think short of cans of kerosene and, <laughs> and torches and pitchforks, no. Uh, I, I don't think it's fixable. I think that family court is, uh, if you look into it, uh, into Title 4D, into just the, the rampant corruption. What's that? I don't know what Title 4 Title 4D is part of the Social Security Act, and what basically it boils down to is the courts get paid for collecting child support from the federal government. Family courts are the only courts in the country that make a profit. They actually make money because they're getting paid to collect, but guess what they're not getting paid to? They're not getting paid to enforce visitation. So they largely ignore the complaints. The money is in collecting child support. But why do they set it up? Like, why do they set it up like that? I think it's all about the Benjamins, baby. It's about the money. I think that if women didn't vote, it would solve everything. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> if women had never voted, we probably wouldn't be here. I don't yeah. know. I'm, I've heard you talk about that. I'm kind of torn on the subject myself on there's a constitutionalist in me that does believe every person should have a vote uh, on the other hand i look at the carnage that's happened socially in this country since women got the vote and it, it hasn't been pretty well and most men didn't vote in history either it was just oh absolutely I'm like, yeah, you know, um, I could, I could maybe get behind like, um, property, like landowners or, um, uh, maybe, um, uh, net taxpayers. I was like, even if we do it a different way, most of the women will be out other than maybe some only fans models. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 when I found out, I was like the infrastructure of society. I didn't realize ha almost half of men work in some sort of infrastructure jobs. If you count like truck like it, it, it's you know relative because everyone's got a different like what they think is included but when i found right. that out i'm like i have this and I, i'm just curious if you have an opinion on it i have a sneaking suspicion that they're somehow taking money from men and giving it to women even though like women don't add value like i was thinking about the i'm, I'm a sports person so the wnba how they basically take the men's money to fund our industry. And I'm like, I wonder if they do that for just like our normal jobs. Oh, absolutely. I mean, women in terms of collecting entitlements from the government uh, cancels out whatever taxes they pay. They're, they're a net loss to the government. Men are a net, a net gain. So yeah, uh, women as a group use up so much entitlement funding from the government that their taxes don't mean much. And it's actually just like the WNBA, it's the men subsidizing them. It's the men's taxes that are being paid that ultimately come back to, to women as a group in the form of entitlements. That's not to uh, you know include working women, which is fine. I'm all for that. Uh, but women as a group are a tax loss. Well, and I was thinking about how most of the women that are like making money, it's off of beauty. So it's like, it's funny because they're either like, it seems like, and this is just 
like my thought is that it seems like we either monetize beauty or we monetize or we have some subsidized job like HR, like, do we really need HR? You know what I mean? Like, and what we'll do is we'll take the money from the men and then think we're better than them in the dating game, like, because they don't make enough money, but it's like a catch 22 because they're, they don't know it and they don't like have a choice in it, but I think they're funding us. They are, uh, absolutely. I, th I think that's a great way to diagram it yeah and then it like screws up the dating market because everyone's just letting us live in delusion where we think we're like these smart chicks and our jobs killing the world you know and we're oh, really yeah. well and look, look at what we've been telling women for ages about everything we 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 get up we talk about single mothers as they're some sort of heroes more of this public fawning over women that we were talking about earlier that oh my god single mother she's a, the hero of america a uh, wonderful thing or look she tied her shoe by herself everybody stand here and clap that is generally our attitude toward women as a group even before you get to the work environment yeah well and i remember being like i worked in sales before and I remember the guys like saying something to me that I get special treatment and I was offended. I'm like, no, I don't. And then I was like, oh my God, I do. <laughs> I was like, everyone just like helps me. I got the best sales territory. I'm like, they totally, they totally did. And so we'll go around thinking we're like the ba baddest bitch in the office. You know what I mean? But it's really just everyone like giving us a red carpet. It probably ends when we're like 45, though, I'm guessing, like, or whatever. And, well, yeah, <laughs> however, however well you age. But, you know, yeah. feminists call that red carpet oppression. That's right. special treatment. That's women being oppressed. So not only are these women better than the guys, they make more money, they're more special, more capable, more wonderful. They're also oppressed. So, boy, it's, it's they got both sides of the coin. Yeah, no, and when I, I realized this, I was like, wow, this is so crazy. And it's so crazy too, because we'll shit on guys that are like bus drivers or like build like the infrastructure jobs because maybe, I, I don't know the salaries, but I'm guessing like a lot of, or at least some infrastructure jobs don't pay what women would like like them to maybe. And right. so it's like, well, you'll hear girls say, oh, I wouldn't date a bus driver. I wouldn't date this or that when it's like, I heard this from a TV host and I was thinking you're talking into a microphone. Like how are you might make more, but how are you, you better? You're just monetizing your beauty. And I do the same thing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm not more competent than the guy that's building the building next door. <laughs> well, kudos to you that you even recognize it. Um, uh, there's several female, uh, and I'm not going to go into individual personalities here, but there's several female sort of red pill content creators uh, alleged advocates for men out there who don't recognize that that is exactly why they're popular. Yeah, well, and I realized too why they hate us in this space because we'll come in and tell them how to talk. <laughs> and that's yep. what I realized the women do too. We'll like go into the men's spaces and then be like, you can't say it. Like I realized when we say you can't say it like that, you're you're telling guys to talk in a more feminine way, basically. Yep. And finally, I believe men are learning to not listen to that. Yeah, we hate it too. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, do you respect a guy who's a mousy about what he thinks um, and defers to you because you're female? No. The, none of these women that scream for that kind of treatment from men actually respect it yeah. when they get it. It's a shit test. What do you think about all of the slut shaming that they do against us and the body shaming and, you know, all of the, <laughs> like, what do you think about all of these feminists that shame men for having standards? Oh, gosh. Well, there's sort of two different questions. Feminists do shame men for having standards. Uh, women and let's be honest uh, i mean this and this is a social problem i'm not saying this happens in a vacuum or and i'm not pointing the finger just to women as a group because men reinforce this stuff but women overall have 
a serious entitlement and superiority uh, issue going on relative to men. Uh, this culture thrives on the bumbling idiot father who can't decide which painkiller to take in, without his wife's advice. Uh, that's how we sell things in America to people, is by denigrating men and elevating women to an irrational uh, sort of status that they haven't earned. Yeah, and I realized it doesn't help us because then we just make these stupid decisions because we think we're as smart as men when we're not. And then it's like, then we just think we're better than the guys when we don't know better. And, <laughs> and well, then there is something to be said for some of that. I mean, women generally, they live longer than men. Uh, they have the opportunity to have a lot more flexibility in their lives than men do by far. Um, I question whether men are smarter. Oh, I, th I think they are. I, I think, I think they probably in that form of intelligence, but in survival intelligence, men are retarded. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, they're more, um, they do more of the dangerous jobs though. You know what I mean? So, well, but what I'm talking about is a guy that goes and, and works 12 hours driving a truck or doing something else equally dangerous and then turns all over his resources over to a woman who's basically his abuser. That isn't intelligent. That's dumb. That's dumb fence post kind of dumb. <laughs> um, men that do that and they end up saying, oh my God, I can't believe it. When I lost my job, I got sick or I broke my leg and couldn't work for a couple of months. She left me. I can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> sure, dude. And you'll just say, what did you expect? <laughs> exactly. And that's what I say. What did you expect? This is what you set up. And they're just flattened by it. They're totally waylaid. They don't get that that's what they created. What do you what do you think when the women say not all women are like that? Enough women are like that. What percent of women do you think are like that? <laughs> uh, it's a wild guess, but I, I'm, I'm going to go with, with. Well, let's define that. <laughs> hmm. Well, Lee. OK. You're a smart guy. I see what you did. So, <laughs> OK, so. Basically, like either Trampy will leave you if you stop working or like can't work for a couple months and will divorce you, take your shit and try to control you for a lifetime. I'd say north of 60 percent. OK, I was going to say 80. Well, that's significantly north of 60 <laughs> percent. I don't I don't have any problem with that number. Yeah. Um, and if you expand the definition of that into, let's say, a guy has a period of depression that lasts a year and he's just worthless at work, loses his job. Uh, even a woman that might not appear too materialistic is going to get tired of that guy real quick. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. And in, if that's the scenario or kind of scenario we're talking about, I would go north of 80 percent. Well, I would also realize that like the wives between 40 and 60 are uh, maybe like 35 to 60, roughly that generation, 55 are terrible. So even if they're still married, like none of them believe in obeying their husband. And, oh, like, yeah. and so we're basically getting advice from women that don't have like the mindset to be wives, but they'll like put on a show like they're traditional. But then when you like kind of, cause I just like living in reality. Like I don't consider myself a trad con. I was like a volleyball chick, you know, but it's like, if you got married after the age of 25 or 26, whatever, if you weren't a virgin on your wedding day, like you can't really say you're this traditional woman that you're like pretending, you don't pretend it's like pretending you don't believe in obeying your husband. And I realized I'm like, wow, there's, it's just a generation of like, shitty wives and i think it's around like especially the 40 year olds and like 50 ish like early 50s i, I don't know if you've noticed that trend but sure uh, absolutely uh but uh, again i gotta go back to to having to be equally real about men these are shitty wives because this is the type of woman that men have created 
Yeah, yeah. We're running around, kissing women's butts, fawning over them, telling them lies so they feel good about themselves, agreeing with them when they know that they're wrong. All those behaviors, are, they create entitled little brats that don't want to be uh, 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 in a marriage contract that requires sacrifice and discipline and giving. Um, no, <clears throat> they don't want that. And it's because men have told them they don't have to bring it to the table. Yeah. No, I realized that too. I was like, wow, everybody's just lying to us like all the time. Yes. Uh, the lies go both ways. We're lying about everybody all the time. And the moment, and it's one of the reasons you're going to get pushback. I've certainly, I've gotten a ton of pushback over the years. If you start telling the truth, you're going to upset both traditional conservatives and people on the left and feminists. Uh, it's going to upset everybody. The truth is not a popular thing, especially about the sexes. Do you think, do you think that there is room for cooperation between men, men's rights movements and feminists? Absolutely not. <laughs> Why? No. Well, gosh, it's, it's like saying, is there, um, room for African-Americans in the KKK. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess theoretically on paper somewhere, there, there's that possibility. But since feminism is by definition a movement attacking men and seeking to do harm to men and harming women in the process, where's, where's what common ground do we find? Have you ever heard the argument that basically you could find, I've heard people say you could find common ground in like 50, 50 custody because if feminists actually wanted equality, they, they would agree that that should be the default. Right. And they do not. Every time that there's a shared parenting initiative that pops up, and I know lots of people involved in several States trying to get these initiatives passed, it's feminist groups that come to block them and fight them legally to, to keep it from happening. They yeah. don't want equality. Do you think that men get a fair shot in criminal court? Um, no. I mean, I, there's obviously men are sentenced to 66% more time than women for the same crime. Um, so there's an inherent unfairness right there there's unfairness between the races but the the most profound disparity that we have is between men and women when it comes to criminal sentencing so no they're not getting a at least they're not getting a fair shake at sentencing and in cases of sexual assault they're often not getting a fair shake of due process what do you so i thought in um when it comes to criminal court, it's based off of evidence and family court is based on a balance of probabilities. So that's why family court is worse. But I'm hearing that criminal court still has a lot of the same issues against men. Well, yeah, I mean, men have been, lots of men have been convicted of sexual crimes, sexual assaults, uh, based on nothing but the testimony of one witness um without forensic evidence at all of a rape having occurred and that is considered compelling enough to convict them and they go to prison frequently these guys uh, the innocence project most of their work <laughs> what they've come up with is that almost everybody that they've ultimately gotten exonerated of crimes were rape accusations men wow. that were convicted just on uh the say so of the woman and there are, you know, obviously sexual assault's a real problem. False allegations are a real problem too, especially when our criminal courts will take that accusation as actual evidence in a trial and put somebody in prison for it. Wow, because I've heard of the Innocence Project, but I didn't realize that it actually makes a lot of sense that they're freeing men that have been falsely accused of crimes. Why do you think we're like this as women? Like, is there something like biological about us or like that, sure. like the, I, it just seems like we don't have an accurate grasp on reality. 
uh, for whatever reason. And sometimes like I spoke to a younger girl about a case like sexual, like a, she was saying she was sexually assaulted. Now I'm the wrong chick to like bring this to because <laughs> I'm like, okay, what happened? I need to know like exactly what happened. And she like, and basically it came down to it. He was being pushy and like, she said, no, and he just kept pushing it. But I wouldn't say that's the same thing as like, like eventually, um, but, but essentially, um, it, it was basically put like she, he was being pushy. She said no. And he just kept pushing it. Right. And maybe like, like touched her for a second. And then, but you know what I mean? It wasn't like the way she was describing it. And when I kept like asking questions, like, I, I'm, I'm like, why were you alone with him? Why were you in the car? Do you know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't make sense. And I'm like, why do so many women have an inaccurate like grasp of, re of reality when it comes to these cases. Cause I've seen this on my show too. Well, uh, the you asked originally really a question about biodeterminism. Is there something biological yeah. in us? And I want to say, yes, there is. I mean, if you just look at the progression of hominids from where we came from into human existence, if men weren't disposable, we would have been a dead end evolutionary experiment. Uh, it, it wouldn't have happened if we didn't protect women at all costs and throw reason out the window, you have to protect females if you want your species to continue, at least with human beings. We did that for a long, long time. And it's become, I think, a, a sort of a rote set of expectations in our species that uh, somewhere at the base of our biology is protect women using men's power, force, strength, whatever their lives, their lifeblood to continue the species. And I think that gets expressed in all kinds of crazy ways. It doesn't mean that we're bound to do it this way. Uh, obviously, we can raise above, rise above some of our programming, um, but I do think there's a biological component of this uh, I just don't give it all. I'm not a, a determinist in that way. I don't give it all the weight. Mm -hmm. Well, I almost think that way patriarchy, that's why it's made sense for so long because women don't really get oppressed under it because men have an innate instinct to protect us. Right. And the rules of patriarchy says you're going to be protected uh, by men, uh, women and children first. That's patriarchy, which was never a form of oppression. It was a form of privilege for women, yeah. uh, a wonderful thing uh, to have. And women have squandered that, unfortunately. Yeah, I heard you could um, put your husband in jail if he didn't pay the bills. <laughs> I'm like, there's a lot of women out there. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would love to trade it back you know what i mean oh yes and you know there was times where if, if a man struck his wife he would be whipped publicly um there were many years where if a woman committed a crime a husband would suffer the punishment for it uh recommend uh christina hoff summers who stole feminism for a lot of the history on so-called patriarchy it's a great read and very enlightening about just how much privilege women have always enjoyed. Oh, so that would probably go in the face because the, the, the number one pushback I get is the abusive men are just going to abuse you. The men just wake up and think abuse. How am I going to abuse women today? And if we give them too much. Gotta twirl the mustache while you think of ways to oppress and abuse. <laughs> it's so ridiculous <laughs> yes it is it is ridiculous um you feminists will find abuse under every rock and in every dark corner it's all over the place for them uh, but it is just part of the feminist narrative that men are abusers uh, men are protectors and they always have been and yes, there is a small percentage of men that are jerks and do terrible things. And and that guy that comes home after thinking, I'm going to put my wife in her place, he does exist. He's one in a thousand, but they're out there. Uh, and feminists have painted all men 
under that guy's image. Well, it's funny. I think that we do that because we love these terrible men. Oh, we love them. Like Ted Bundy. We love Ted Bundy. You know, it's like, it's like, maybe we think that because we just love them so much. We're like, we love these abusive men. You know, I, for years I spent working, you said you didn't know what it meant. I worked in substance abuse, alcoholics, drug addicts, that sort of thing. And I can't even tell you how many women I canceled over the years that were in like their fourth marriage with their fourth abusive alcoholic husband. Um, and if you ask, are we seeing a pattern here? <laughs> <laughs> even some of your peers would get angry about that implying that there's some responsibility but yes women are attracted to dangerous men that is a truth that we're not supposed to say but it's still true how do you think social media has influenced women and men oh my god not for the better um i have to say i i think we've had some good years now with the red pill content the social media actually is having an impact of getting the truth out to a lot of people but still if you look at just the narratives out there that that float around social media um it's uh, gosh it's ended up with only fans that's that's where social media has taken us with women and with men it's taken us i think to more a better place with red pill uh, information but social media we're more isolated from each other than we've ever been while we're more connected at the same time do you consider yourself red pill or MGTOW or that's a really good question yeah I do consider myself red pill there's there's no doubt about that and there's guys that would tell you I couldn't be MGTOW I'm in a 21 year long-term relationship uh, with a partner who I love very much. Uh, that would not qualify me for some guys as a man going his own way. However, I am a man and I am going my own way. So <laughs> make your conclusion there whether or not I can be MGTOW. Um, I think I can. What do you think the the most common response I get about MGTOW is these are the men that women wouldn't want anyways? You know, guys don't get to MGTOW from sexual failure. They get there from sexual success and bad experiences with women. Mm -hmm. uh, one of those experiences may be rejection, uh, but I know a lot of MGTOW guys that did their stint in family court and came out with the blades poking out of their back and went MGTOW from there. Uh, I don't buy, of course, that's just a sour grapes mentality. All those guys were guys women didn't want anyway. Um, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> so I'm not buying it. How can a guy, if a guy wants to, like, what are a guy's options if he wants to have a family? Uh, if if a guy wants to have a family in the traditional sense, I would say, you know, make sure your passport is up to date. Because um, <laughs> if you're going to pick from the pool in the United States and Canada, you're going to be SOL. Mm -hmm. um, there's just not hardly any wife and mother material. I heard Aaron Clary the other day say something I thought was great. Lots of women want to get married and have children very few want to be a wife and mother and that is what we're actually dealing with here um so i suggest the guys you know if you can do it if you can pull off the digital nomad move to the philippines or somewhere else uh, where the culture is not feminist where people don't embrace that stuff and start shopping there for a family, but if you get online or, or travel there and bring somebody back here uh, to, the, to the United States or Canada or the UK, you're gonna end up with the same problem. Um, they get Westernized very quickly. And then you end up with them having the use of our family court systems. It's, it's not, <laughs> not a good thing to do. Uh, so if you can't move, 
I would say another option is surrogacy. Uh, if you can pay a woman to have a child for you, if you want a child that bad, but for a guy that wants to stay in the United States and have a family, all I can say is good luck. I'll see you when your email hits my box in three, four, five years down the road. And it's probably true. Is there a way for men to legally protect themselves when they have a kid? No. Wow. No. <clears throat> I tell this to men all the time. Do not have a child unless you're prepared for the distinct possibility of that child hating your guts because he or she has been alienated from you. This is the most common thing at XY Crew where we, we do men's groups throughout the week. I'd like to put a, a pitch in for that. You can find out more about it at paulelam.com forward slash XY Crew. Um, but so many of the men in there their children were being turned on them even before the divorce happened within the home itself. The mother was colluding with the child to alienate the father. And the repair of that is often a failure. It's just hard to get over it once a child has been alienated. Uh, there are some cases where you can patch it up, but they're very few and far between. Uh, but don't have children and expect that it's going to be this, you're going to be bonded with that child in, until the day you die with this loving relationship. Men are really, really ill-advised to go into it expecting that that's the likely outcome. The more likely outcome is a bunch of money and a child that hates you. And it's the one red pill, I feel like, I was like, I don't know, maybe 14 years old or something. And I realized just how all the moms are crazy. And even if they're married, they're still talking shit about the dad. Go on to some of the, the mother's forums. Uh, the, the, they're out there, several of them, uh, stay at home moms and, and uh, mother's forums. And you will see women ragging about their husbands all day. And you can, even see the alienation of the child play out in their comments wow. of what they're doing with their children. It, it's despicable and horrible. And it's it is exactly why I, I tell men all the time, don't do it. Right. There, there is no legal protection for you. I talked to a divorce attorney once and I asked him if he was afraid of getting married and having kids. And he told me he he had no fear about marriage. He could he would get married tomorrow. But he said, I am afraid of having kids because once you have kids, those are not your kids, they're hers. And, and more accurately, they're the state's. Um, the state will enforce her ownership of their children. They're treated like furniture. They claim to act in the best interest of the child, even as they uh, eviscerate the relationship they have with their fathers through the courts. Um, it's, a, it's a horrible situation and he's right. He should be afraid. He should be afraid to get married, too, if he values all of his assets. Uh, I'm sure that uh, getting a law degree was not cheap, and there's a lot of work that goes into it, and then you make a lot of money. If what he's saying is, I don't mind losing half of my worth, then fine. And if you don't mind, you don't mind. Uh, but he's right. With kids, it's the gift that keeps on giving. I'm curious about this men's group. What are like the most common problems you hear from men in these groups? There's a lot that goes on in there. A lot of the men are in contested acrimonious divorces. There's cases of parental alienation. There's cases of false accusation. Um, that sort of dots the landscape of what we do at XY Crew. But, you know, the most uh, common thing is that men come there so they have a place to talk without looking over their shoulder and without the world being offended by what they have to say or or thinking they're crazy or misogynistic or hateful uh, for just being honest about their lives. And so that's, I mean, that's the real value, but we get the full gambit of men's issues, everything from, uh, what is it, um, paternity fraud, uh, to parental alienation. It's all there. 
How common do you think paternity fraud is? Real common. As a matter of fact, uh, and you can do the Google on this, the research found that 30% of men who question paternity find out they're not their father. Think about that. 30% of men who pursue it to get testing for themselves and the child to determine paternity find out that they are not the father. That's a huge number. And how many, how many millions of men don't test? How how do you, common do you think it is in the normal? Because I guess I could hear what the other side would say. They would say, well, those are it's going to be like a smaller sample size because those are just the men's with men with questions. Like and I and I say thank you for making my point. <laughs> if, if that small sample is turning up that kind of number, how many men aren't investigating? Wow. Now so I'm not I'm not suggesting that 30% of all children are not fathered by the, the the identified father. I'm just saying that it's a substantial enough number. Uh, it keeps coming up that I think it's worth mandatory DNA testing at birth. I think it should be jail time too for however many years the man wasted, the woman should waste double. Cuz it's like he wasted 1 year, why shouldn't you waste two? Well, yeah, have fun <laughs> making that change. <laughs> no, I, I tried. I've been, I've been telling people this and they're like, well, that's not good for the kid. I'm like, neither is it not having his real dad because it's confusing for the kid too, because like, you know, something's up. Like um, I, my parents gave up one of my brothers for adoption because they were young and then adopted later. And I'm, I'm more similar to the one I didn't even grow up with so okay. you can you can tell like stuff comes you know so uh, yep it's like but everyone it's like whenever a woman's held accountable they just it, it's like they just yell at you like like i'm the bad guy for putting them in jail not she's not the bad guy for lying about paternity and that is yeah, i think reflective of the, the overall problem of the lack of honesty It's one of the things I do like about what you're doing is that you're pushing for at least an honest discussion uh, because so little of that happens out there. I don't know how long we should punish women who commit uh, paternity fraud. Some women commit paternity fraud when the real situation is they don't know who the father is. Um, that happens. Mm -hmm. But there's knowing paternity fraud uh, and it happens. It happens a lot. Uh, can't really put a number on it because it's a, I think it's a number our society doesn't want to investigate. So we haven't. Um, and that's that. I can't even imagine. That would be so crazy. What are the men? Because it's so interesting because you probably have such a unique point of view because you hear like what the men say behind closed doors. So like, what, what do men go through when that type of situation happens? It's devastating. It's absolutely devastating. Guys that have loved their children, worked for them, done everything they could, put a roof over their head, love them, put clothes on their back, feed them, take care of them in every way. And then all of a sudden, one day, it's not you. It's somebody else's kid. And they are absolutely devastated. I've seen several of them say, "Okay, screw it. I love this child. I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of him anyway. Uh, I I want to be this child's father," and it fails. So much of the time, it just falls apart because you, that's a hump you can't get over. Who's usually the most common like dad? Like, is it a neighbor usually? Is it an ex-boyfriend, a best friend? That I don't know. Uh, probably I would say there's a high number that come from coworkers. Oh, coworkers. That makes sense. That's got to be like the highest rate of affairs. Coworkers. You would think. Yeah, you would think. I don't know for sure the numbers on that, but it, it makes sense. That's where you meet people. Right. 
Do you think if we banned women from working tomorrow that all of society's problems would go away? Some of them sure would. <laughs> <laughs> I would have fun looking at uh, what got worse and what got better. Um, uh, but, you know, I'm not, uh, despite some of the accusations from feminists, I'm not an extremist. I don't want to ban women from work. I, oh, I, want, I, them, uh, I, I want them to push ahead and have happy lives, whatever makes them happy, whatever floats their boat. I think they should do it. Um, if you think being in a cubicle five days a week for nine hours with bags under your eyes and kids that are screaming for your attention because you're not there all the time. If that's your happiness, you go girl. I'm an extremist. <laughs> yes, women, you are. I think women should be banned from pretty much everything. Well, I mean, <laughs> what about coffee making? I mean, honestly, if you put dollars at the end of it, men will find a way to do it better. Let's just call it what it is. <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. The Starbucks line is slow. It is slow. It is not that efficient. It is always out. If we had men doing it, they would be running to your car to give it to you. Like, I'm not saying all men, but like, if you put a dollar at the end of something, Men will figure out how to do it. Women, it's just not the same. We're like, la, la, la. You know, maybe we could monetize beauty. Fine. Have the girls hold the boxes, you know, the news, whatever. And we're already doing that. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes we're like putting women in really serious positions, but that's really what they're doing. <laughs> they're just standing there being pretty and seeming important. Um uh, I, I wouldn't use pretty to describe our vice president, but I'm I'm still looking to find out what she does. Yeah, she had a lot. She had a lot of sex. Well, <laughs> yeah, she slept her way to the middle and uh, did a good job at that. And now look at her; she's vice president of the United States. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how it's like rewarded promiscuity. Even I was thinking of Alex Cooper from Call Her Daddy. Do you know who that is? No. She had um, a sex podcast. She basically like very sexual talking about like her sex escapades, whatever. And it got really, really big. It was really influential to the point like women would say they learned how to do like sexual things from this podcast, you know, and she sold it for 50 million and just got engaged to a millionaire guy, like a rich guy. So it's like, it's so interesting to see like, how women and that obviously she got away with this because she's hot you know an average chick never but but it's just interesting like to see how there's like no consequence for women anymore not really there's always a simp to bail them out yes there is um and that's how the world turns so what are we going to do i guess the guys just go their own way <laughs> I, I think they do and i think they are for the yeah. most part, you know, I, I read something the other day that si over 60% of young men have not approached a woman for dating in over a year. Um, and what they're saying in, in the articles that I read is it, it's too much work, that women are too much maintenance. It's not worth the hassle uh, to try to approach any of them. That's not going to play out well for women in the end. It's already, I mean, like I said, all the studies say women are miserable compared to where they were in the 1950s. They're absolutely miserable. Um, and that's only going to continue to get worse with the path that they're on. I don't see this thing improving until it breaks and then it can improve. How would it break? I think a bit eventually, I mean, it's pretty clear we're headed for a societal collapse. I'm not going to put on my foil hat just yet, but all the indicators of a declining dynasty um, is there. Uh, all the indicators of, of social uh, un unraveling are going on right in front of our eyes. Marriage is falling off. Uh, people are falling out of the church. They're They're Re rejecting authority in many ways. And we've seen recently our city starting to burn. These are young fatherless kids, mostly young men in places like Antifa uh, that are now seeking to destroy everything we've got. Uh, 
I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow, but I think we're on the way. And the only way it'll ever get better is if it breaks first. So what does a societal collapse look like? Like everyone's just lawless? Or... Looks like a lot of poverty, a lot of lawlessness, um, uh, institutions that don't work, police departments that don't work, you know, federal agencies that don't work, uh, all those things just sort of coming apart at the seams. And so you have a, a, a lot of poverty and a lot of violence. What traits do you think men should look for in a wife and women should look for in a husband? Well, the first thing I'd look for in a wife is a woman that doesn't insist on getting married. Uh, I encourage men, don't look for a wife. You know, look for the, if you, if you want a long-term relationship, something like that, look for the possibility of that. But what is the return for men on getting married? What is the point of a legal marriage anymore? It's just a piece of paper on one hand, but it's a piece of paper that will control the rest of your life through the state. So, I mean, there's for religious men, there's nothing biblical about a state wedding. Uh, it's, it's not there. So why should men look for a wife? I mean, and that's what men are saying. They're not looking for wives now. That's is what what is happening. So look for a long term relationship if you want one. But if you look for a wife, you're looking for your life to be wrecked. And I'm sorry, but look, over I, half. I of, get it. I get it. Yeah, it, it, it's like why on it's like saying I'm going to look for some super addictive drug that'll you know destroy my liver in three doses. Uh, yeah, go ahead, have fun with that. But I don't recommend it. Um, what I look for in women, integrity, accountability. I'd say accountability three times because if there's a crisis of anything in modern women, it's a lack of accountability uh, for anything. They're just never wrong about anything. Um, so I look for accountability. Can she own her behavior? Can she admit mistakes? Can she actually apologize? <laughs> for doing something wrong. If she can't or won't, I would reject that out of hand. And again, I go back to this argument. I don't think guys, I don't give them a pass. These guys didn't see how vindictive a woman was because they didn't try. Mm. They didn't give her an opportunity to act vindictive and they should, because that's something you really do wanna know about a person's character. I, I tell guys, if a woman wants to be wined and dined, she's dangerous. Mm. What does that woman bring to you? Her needs. And if that's the way you want to set up a relationship that starts and ends with your wallet, go for it. You, know, you can do the same thing with hookers and it's a little bit more efficient. But if you're going to do this, look for a woman with integrity and accountability. Make sure she actually has it. Don't look at her with starry eyes because she's hot and she's got a nice rack and say, oh, well, she, she must have integrity too. Look at her. Uh, because that's what men do is they just roll up everything into a good package when they're attracted to a woman. You have to be able to step back and do an assessment of her character and her personality. And if you can't do that, don't commit. To anything because you're just asking for trouble uh, then we get into things like a relatively low body count man if you're i wouldn't want to make anybody laugh by suggesting you look for a virgin um because unless you want to marry somebody that's 10 you're not going to find one um so skip that i mean women have sexual partners big deal that's okay so do men I don't have a problem with that. I got a problem with a high body count though. Mm. I look at what a woman does for a living. I'm with a woman that worked for years in the financial industry, not a topless dancer and not a waitress, somebody who can think and that does. Um, mm. There's a lot of things 
to look for. But the, the main thing, more than anything else, is the rarest commodity, and that is personal accountability. Mm. And I'm sorry, ladies, you just don't have it. For the most part, you, you have every once in a while, you meet this golden unicorn that uh, actually owns her stuff, acknowledges her flaws, and seeks to improve herself so she can bring more to the table in a relationship. That is not the average woman. Right. And if you want to settle for less than that, then please don't write me and say, <laughs> did you help me get out of trouble? What about what about women to men? What are what are the character traits of like a good man? Oh, that's a good question. I, I rarely get asked that. Uh, guess what? Accountability. <laughs> it's it's a really good thing for a man to have, and I think men lead. We we're not given the passes in life that women are. Uh, we're held to account a lot more, so it's something that's easier for us. We're trained into it. Uh, but that still, if if you're with a guy and he has 19 reasons to Sunday why he did something wrong, but none of them have to do with him making a mistake, then that is a, a warning sign about somebody. Um, I know some of my audience going to kill me for this, but if I'm a woman looking for a man, I'm looking for financial stability. I'm not looking for a sugar daddy. I'm looking for financial stability. If a guy doesn't have his game together financially, it's probably a lot of other stuff in his life that's not together. And it's something to, to look for. Integrity. Simple stuff. I mean, we this used to be, it's, it's funny, and I'm not poking fun at you for asking, but 30, 40, 50 years ago, this wouldn't be a question. Of course, you look for integrity and character in people, and that's what you do. Um, but nowadays, those commodities are so rare that we have to remind ourselves what we're looking for. So you're saying not astrology. Yeah, pretty much. And, uh, if they're if they're telling you if they're asking you what crystal you 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 worship, uh, probably want to avoid those too. Put down the crystals and the astrology. I had um. A woman recently told me that she could get a high value man um, that had a chest tattoo, two baby daddies, and brought in crystals. She had the chest tattoo? Yeah. Oh, yes. She attracted? Cute. Yes. She can get a high value man. Yeah. High value men hook up with average and low value women all the time oh yeah but not keep one i might like actually ha have a family with one. Oh yes <laughs> Yo, you think? let me tell you a true story this is funny when my okay. partner's father was in her final day his final days i was in charge of his medical care and he was doing poorly toward the end we had to have a hospital bed put into his house and the guy that brought it in was just making conversation with me. And he had told me about this topless dancer he had dated that had wrecked him financially and uh, done a bunch of other things to make his life difficult. And then he proceeded to tell me that he was now dating this other dancer, but she was different than all the other dancers. Um, she, she was not, she wasn't going to treat him that way. Um, this is how men operate. We got to be honest. If we're going to tell the truth. We got to be honest about men's sexual shallowness with women, of uh, what happens in men's minds when they're sexually excited, when they want to be with a woman. Because initially, what almost all men do is they start developing blinders for any red flags. They intend to not see anything that will impede their sexual access. And that's a huge vulnerability for men. And it's one that they need to own. Yeah. When I think, uh, a chest tattoo? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I see women with men all the time that are, you know, frumpy, straggly pink hair, dressed in sweats. Um, and with a guy that's relatively high value sexually, uh, it it is what it is. Inflation has been crazy. 
<laughs> Have you heard of hoflation? Yes. <laughs> it, it, and it has been. <laughs> it, it's part of the world we live in. And again, hoflation is a measure of men's spending. Right. That's true. It's what men capitalize on. It's what they put their investment in. Mm. Men create the nightmares in their lives with women they absolutely do there's no pass for that it, it, i mean it's if we're going to have an honest conversation men have to own that and as long as they don't own it they're going to be vulnerable to the very things that are affecting men in droves today the parental alienation divorce rate all that stuff well thank you for coming on the channel paul I was very, very pleasant, but pleased to talk to you. Sorry, cut that that other part out. No, <laughs> <Right straight. laughs> uh, no um, I've been watching your videos for a minute, but you're so funny. I'm going to keep reacting to them. I want to show some chicks them. <laughs> I love it. No, I, I, I appreciate the coverage. Um, where can they find you? I know. Um, you have advice for men.com? Nope, that's not me. Um, not at all. They can find me at, at really? Paul Elam, Paul Elam gotta talk to my <laughs> I'm a, an ear for men on YouTube where you can find hundreds of my videos um, that I've made over the years. I'm not making them much these days, but there's still a lot of traffic to them. Um, I think most guys will enjoy them. Okay. Even if they don't. I want to get you on a panel. If you're ever in London, come by. I'll put you on a panel with some chicks. It'll be hilarious. Well, we're going to have, we have an international conference on men's issues coming up in Budapest next year. Maybe you could fly over there and talk to Mike Buchanan about talking. Oh, sure. I don't, I don't, this is really dumb. I don't even know where Budapest is, <laughs> but. East of you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> over the water. I'm, I'm an American woman, you know what I mean? It's like but stop before you get to Russia. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh well guys, make sure um you go follow his channel, subscribe to his channel, um, check out his men's group. Um, also like the video on your way out. Um, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Like the video on your way out, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you next time.